You know, the pain of the past is, again, one of those things that people talk about probably more than anything else. And part of the reason of that is they want to play the blame game. They don't want to be solely responsible for their future, so they have to highlight the past. Now, the past was not their fault. People do things to us. People are hurtful to us. We are hurtful to other people. So I'm not saying that there's not rightly placed blame. The issue is placing that blame in relation to your future is irrelevant. And so again, I mentioned the issue of the drill sergeant who meets you at boot camp that first day. He or she does not care what happened to you in the past. They're never going to bring it up. And if you bring it up, you're sure to get a, a truckload of punishment until you, for, until you stop bringing it up. <laughs> That's why they take everything from you on that first day of boot camp. They take your shoes. They take your clothes. They cut all your hair off. They, even if you come in there with glasses, they'll take those and give you military-issued glasses. There is going to be nothing left of your identity. You're not going to have your stuff and your none of that. You, not, you are taken. Your identity is removed, and you are now being molded into a soldier. And so everything that you're used to in terms of civilian life disappears because you've got to go from civilian to soldier. They're cutting off your past as if it never happened. You are now a number. You are now a name. You are now something completely different. And so that's why people can often say that the military made such a significant impact on their life because they needed that to break that connection with the past and get them to move forward and see that they don't have to keep leaning on what happened to them in the past as some sort of crutch and that they are able to do far more than they ever imagined just giving themselves that chance just giving themselves the permission to go ahead and create the life they want despite what happened to them in the past because what we end up doing is refusing that permission we refuse ourselves the permission to move forward in our lives because of what happened. We feel that somehow it is unjust. But man, people are not going to come back necessarily and apologize to you. Maybe they can't. Maybe they're dead. Maybe just they just won't. And even if they did come back to apologize, it's not going to fix anything. You're still going to feel that injustice. The only thing that's going to heal or restore you is by you creating the life you would have lived had nothing ever happened to you in the past. That's why, again, what I'm saying is we have got to shift you from focusing on self-improvement as simply getting over something into performance. We want to get you to the attitude of performance, peak performance. Now, those who I mentioned, again, the two categories of people under, the, under uh, self-improvement, the other people are the People focused on performance, success, achievement, goals, that sort of thing. They tend to um, come at things from a different approach. Now, they can lose sight of certain moral principles. They can become arrogant. They can step all over people in the name of achievement. So we don't want to do that. We don't want to get to that sort of attitude. We want to maintain humility and, you know, uh, being a good person and all of that. You can achieve great things without stepping on other people. You can achieve great things without cheating, without stealing, without all lying and all this other stuff. We can do it. But if you're only focused on the getting over the past, then it you're never going to create the life that you want. Because creating the life you want is based on the principles under peak performance. And so primarily the people that I deal with, I don't get contacted by people who say, CJ, would you help me improve my golf game? Or CJ, could you coach me uh, into taking my business to the next level? I don't get questions from people saying, CJ, I want to get my sales numbers up 20% this year. I don't get that. I don't get those questions. I get questions like, my girlfriend just broke up with me. I don't know what to do. She was my life, etc. I'm having problems at work. My boss is a real jackass and I don't know what to do. My coworkers are jackasses and I don't know what to do. Having problems with my significant other, etc. Hey man, you know, just quit smoking two weeks ago, really struggling with it. Can you help? That's what I get. Now, I'm not trying to demean that in any way, but that just tells me where people are. 
right? It just it just tells me where people are. What we've got to get to is where where these things these things fall by the wayside because we're just not occupied with them. We just don't care because we're too focused on performance. You know, I'll talk about this a lot because a lot of times I will see people, you know, when I talk about criticism or whatever, people say, well, I just use the criticism as fuel for productivity or, you know, all the haters make me work that much harder or whatever. And so they'll say that to me as if I'm going to agree with that or whatever. And I just say, you know what, man, I people don't come to mind when it comes to creating the life I want and doing the things I want to do and achieving my goals. I don't think about critics. <laughs> I don't, and, and nobody, nobody, or I'll see posts on Facebook with people saying, man, you know, you get in those bad times and you find out who your friends are and they start talking about all these people who won't comment on their posts or something else. And this preoccupation with other people and what other people think that's why I'll never post something about saying how much I don't give a damn on Facebook or whatever, because I honestly don't. So that even that thought never enters my mind. I don't think that I should get on Facebook and tell everybody else how I don't give a fuck. No. And I and nobody there's nobody allowed close to my life who's not going to be productive in my life. I have all sorts of friends, but I don't spend time with people who might turn out to be backstabbing whatever i've been on the planet long enough to know you know good people so yeah i mean obviously somebody could sneak in i guess but that's going to be rare i don't allow people into my into my life or in my close circle of friends people that i depend on that are anything like that that I ever have to be concerned about and I certainly don't care about what anybody has to say, and I'm not going to use their criticism as productivity. My vision, my dream, my goals are motivating enough. My well-being is motivating enough. I don't need the motivation of critics. Can you dig that? Hope you can.